the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. What a blessed day, brothers and sisters. How blessed we are to be here and to fall down and worship the footstool of God where His feet rest. The gospel reading we just heard changed my life. I stand in front of you here behind the cross because the cross touched me. And the very words of Christ in the reading today determined me to evaluate my life and lose it in the right direction. It is by His grace and through His words that we ended up at this place that sits under the cross, literally, the School of Theology in Boston. At the top of the hill there sits a chapel, and on top of the chapel, dominating the whole area and big part of the city of Boston, the cross. And for four years, chanted almost every day, Save, O Lord, your people and bless your inheritance. And this is his inheritance, the cross. The guardian of the world. Just the other day, I met a very faithful Christian, non-Orthodox, and I asked him how things are going. How's your business? How's your family? How are and he listed a, a few things that are hard. But he just gave me a big smile and said, But Father, we know our God. We know our God. And I stopped there saying, Yes, we know our God. Because if had I told him the way I know my God, we might have had a different outcome. But brothers and sisters, this is how we know our God right in front of us right here surrounded by flowers and green basil body like yours and mine perfect god and perfect man showing love love that is infinite for all of us no matter how bad or good we are no matter what business we run or how many we hurt or how many we help his love is always there for us for all and abundant. The feast day today is of the cross, the glory of the church, the one that bountifully gushes forth with healings, the one who enlightens the ends of the earth, the treasury of wonders, the divine footstool ordained for the worship of all, through whom the creation is blessed, through whom the Creator is worshipped. It is the sign of joy, redemption from the ancient curse, wonder of angels, wounding of demons, protector of the helpless, trainer of the victors, vessel of light, treasury of life, bestower of the gifts of the Spirit, table that holds Christ as a sacrifice, vine that bears the mystical vine. You crush the, the one who crushes the heads of demons, the mark of the faith, God's blessing upon mortals, mediation with God, wood most blessed. Today, the feast day is not about the crucifixion of the Lord. Although we heard the very hymn as you're coming forward to venerate the, the cross. We heard the hymn that is chanted on Holy Friday as the church is turned into dark and the priest carries the, Christ, the cross in procession. As we crucify Christ, we heard this and we prostrated and we venerated and we kissed the feet of the Lord and we embraced the cross. And yes, shed the tear. The cross today is not above the crucifixion despite this. It is a pointer. It's an arrow that shows us the way to the end of Lent, to the very crucifixion of the Lord and His resurrection. These three things we cannot separate. The cross from the body of Christ and His resurrection. The feast day as a joyful one in the middle of Lent was instituted in the 7th century by Patriarch Sophronios of Jerusalem. Amazing. 
You heard everything about, not everything, part of what the Agathist of the cross describes, the words that describe the cross. The holy cross, the very holy cross, fell captive to the Arabs in the 620, 624. They took it from Jerusalem. And when it returned in 638, the patriarch decided to transfer, put more emphasis on the cross, and move the feast from May, March the 6th of the finding of the cross by St. Helen to the third day of Lent. So that everybody could take advantage of it. Seventh century, brothers and sisters, to know our God. And the wise patriarch Sophronios taught his people three reasons. When you approach the cross, the cross, there are three reasons for this. The first one was and is for us, because them, as much as us today, as we take seriously the great and holy, and I would add, and long fast. We feel beaten up a little bit after three weeks. We cut down on food. We, pray, we spend more time in prayer, long hours at home, and definitely cut down on activities to be in church together. It is tiring. We were so blessed to have a huge number of participants in our services from the Forgiveness Sunday Vespers until the last Friday unprecedented in our community, overwhelming, overwhelming. But this is a time to crucify ourselves, our passions, to step up with contrition of heart, mortified our passions, and so on. So after three weeks of very high participa participation, the last Friday, we took a dip. We lost many of you. And I felt sad a little bit, but I also felt tired myself, knowing that this battle is fierce and that we need to refuel. And this is what the patriarch told them. Great joy, the cross comes in the middle to show us the end, the goal, why we fight it, why we do it, and refuel, get energy. It's a joyful feast. Number two, the patriarch insisted on teaching his people through the cross, forgiveness of sins has come to the world. And yes, this repentance season, the, the season of us insisting on confessing ourselves, we must hear this again and rejoice that the Lord, that God himself through his son shed blood in the new covenant with us for the forgiveness of mankind of all. And finally, the patriarch told them, take courage, take courage. Join your sufferings to the redeeming passion of the Lord on the cross. That you also become partners of his resurrection. Very nice words, to put it bluntly. No pain, no cross. No resurrection. And my pain as a, as a father, as a priest, as a husband, as a citizen of this nation, is no different than yours as teenagers, as young adults, as parents, as grandparents. And we share in our sorrows, in our tragedies, in our losses, in our griefs, we wound one another, you know that, we hurt one another, although we try not to do that. So, here comes the gospel reading today to complement what Patriarch Sophronios teaches us. Following Christ as the source of healing of our struggles. Only when our cross is brought in front of Christ's, overlapped over, hugging himself on the cross with love. 
then we receive healing. Then we can walk the walk. Then we could do the fasting. Then we could do the services. Then we can stand up for three hours. Then we can forgive one another. Then we can serve one another. What did the Lord ask Peter in the gospel reading at Warthros today? Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my lamb. Serve me. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, serve me. Peter, do you love me? Yes, of course, you know everything. Tend to my sheep, serve me. How can we serve one another, the Lord says, if we don't love one another? Because when we love one another, we just love him. And then we can serve. So Christ himself, in a short presentation, tells us the recipe for this fast, for our passions that come and bite us over and over again that we cannot shake off and we continue to do for the ugliness in our heart to shake off by embracing the cross and bring his light into our souls and our lives. First of all, he loves us too and he respects us and he wants us to make a decision ourselves. If we don't want it, it will not happen. If we don't want to be saved, to experience the resurrection, cleansed, pure, able to deal with the waves of life, not on them, but above them, it will not happen. It will not happen. Next, he says, deny yourself. Not your person who he created, but what's in between you and me and Christ. What is it in between? And how beautiful the great and holy land teaches us in his very services. There was somebody the other day telling me, Father, I fast as much as I can, and I pray as much as I can. I have many on my hands, many things on my hands. But forgive me, I don't feel his Lent. And I say, well, Lent, we feel it when we get purple, when we sing the hymns of Lent, when we hear the prayers of Lent, when we do the prostrations of Lent, when we immerse ourselves in the candlelight in the land. That's the great change. Absolutely. And it takes my denial to skip my evening schedule with my friends. Maybe not to go to the gym. Maybe not to read my book. Yes. Get up on the cross of driving 30 miles. Absolutely. The kind of denial. What's in between me and him? This is what deny. And of course, sin, if we're aware of it, fight this. And taking up the cross, which cross? My cross. Knowing what my cross is. Many times we know it's easy to tell what our cross is. But it's hard to see what's in between me or you and us and Christ. Which is why we might need somebody else to tell us so we don't fall into delusion and think, I am there. I am with Christ. I'm good. And, and fall down rapidly. So yes, take up our cross, our struggles and our sufferings, and whatever the Lord gave to us, and to that, whatever we have added to it through our own brokenness and inheritance. But this is the joy today, that by taking up our cross in self-denial, in renouncing ourselves, in repentance, which is what Lent has done for us thus far. We venerate, we embrace, we become one with the one who is crucified for us. And he is the one taking our burdens. His yoke is easy, brothers and sisters. Let us pick it up. As the patriarch Sophronius taught his people, let us take advantage of this beautiful gift to us through the power of thy cross O christ our god preserve us also from the temptations of the evil one and make us worthy to venerate thy divine passion and the life-bearing resurrection having radiantly traversed the great length of the fast and have mercy on us as thou art good and loves mankind amen <laughs>